The one area where DC has always been able to be ahead of the competition is female characters. Think of the animated episodes Girls' Night Out and Grudge Match. Both so good, you should watch them right now. Or the current Harley Quinn animated series, which does a wonderful job showcasing the uh, Harley Quinn Poison Ivy friendship. It's only a friendship there. Uh, but of course, that started in the Batman animated series with uh, a little bit more of a blurred line as to what the relationship is. And then, of course, there are so, like, so many comics that you can check out, uh, including the Gotham City Sirens comic. Uh, that's going to be a whole separate video. Don't worry, we will be talking about that this week for sure. But so far on the big screen, uh, Warner Brothers has had tremendous success with Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, and Mira. Although, with that last one, they might have hit a bit of a snag with the recent release of new information in the Amber Heard Johnny Depp domestic abuse situation, which seems to be being tried in the court of opinion. Um, but this is definitely a very bad development for Amber Heard. And I don't know about recasting, but going forward for Aquaman 2, we might get a new love interest, or you know what, just simply a new female co-star, right? That doesn't always have to be a romantic situation for the second Aquaman. And don't worry, because DC, including an Aquaman's lineup, has a ton of great female characters. It's a deep bench, boy. And many of them, many of them are about to jump to the silver screen. Side note, most of Marvel's best female characters are X-Men. Oh boy, are they so good which of course has been tied up over at Fox, as has the Invisible Woman. So Feige could be making up for lost time very soon. He's also fast-tracking, of course, Lady Thor. That's not her name, but that's how we have to differentiate between the two of them. She's just supposed to be Thor. Don't worry, we'll talk about that a whole lot when the movie uh, comes closer to release. But anyway, as Harley Quinn returns to the silver screen and introduces moviegoers, because the rest of us know who they are, thank you very much, to Black Canary, Huntress, Renee Montoya, and Cassandra Kane, in name only on that last one. Kind of annoyed about it. But anyway, here's a lineup of who's next. Usually I make, and I will make, what's next videos for movies, but this time I'm also doing a who's next. All right, so you won't have to wait very long because this very summer, the DCEU will be getting its first female villain, like major female villain. We've had Feora, she's so cool. What a fight sequence. I wish she'd had more than one. It would, I mean, there was some good stuff there. I would say, it's interesting. I think Birds of Prey is as big a mixed bag as Man of Steel. And some people really like Man of Steel, just like I think some people are really gonna like Birds of Prey. All right, so anyway, there was also Dr. Poison, as you might recall, kind of, right? But they weren't main villains. They were sidekick villains. But Kristen Wiig's Cheetah, She's a main villain. Oh, I'm excited. I am getting excited. Because in the comics, Dr. Barbara Ann Minerva start, she has a tragic origin story because she started out as Diana's friend. We've already seen shades of that in the trailer before becoming her foe. Feeling that Wonder Woman betrayed her. There's that layer to their adversarial situations, which I think is really good. So we'll see how Patty Jenkins brings this to life on the big screen. But the biggest question obviously is, will she go full cheetah? She better go full cheetah. I can understand how after, especially after cats, they would be nervous about that, but you gotta do it. I mean, otherwise she's not really cursed, is she? And it's supposed to be a curse. All right, so, uh, except maybe she's cursed with poor fashion sense. You can't wear so many animal prints, Barbara. All right, so in, uh, in June 2021, uh, so we have to wait, so it take a little bit of a, so it's a year later, right? That's a long time. All right, so anyway, June 2021, Catwoman once more returns to the silver screen. And a lot of actresses have done a great job with this character. I even ended up liking Anne Hathaway in the role, although my favorite is still Michelle Pfeiffer. So good. Um, I could re I've actually gone back and just rewatched the Catwoman sequences in that movie because they're amazing. Um, she never got to continue with the character. It was too early. You were ahead of your time, Michelle. So this time, in a nod to Eartha Kitt's famous and fan favorite portrayal of the character, although Eartha Kitt's best role is obviously Yzma, so good. Uh, but uh, Zoe Kravitz is taking on the role. And at first I, was, I didn't think she was an exciting choice because she's really failed to make an impression with audiences so many times. She's had a lot of chances. But when she recently debuted her Selena Kyle haircut, I was like, oh my God, you're, you've leapt right off of the comic book page. Maybe this is the role that Kravitz has been waiting for. Um, will she get the goggles, right? Oh, by the way, side note, I have to say it. 
She is Jason Momoa's stepdaughter, who, of course, is Aquaman. So I think that had a wee bit to do with her casting. But I don't care, because she now, she, now now I don't care. Well, I'm, I'm feeling more excited about it. Uh, let's see how the actual performance is. But she looks so much like Selena Kyle. How bad can it be? And then also, how will Kravitz uh, differentiate her own version of the character from there are so many other versions at this point that audiences are familiar with? Uh, Catwoman's a tough role, but an iconic one. Uh, and she's the only uh, female character, major female character, in a very crowded movie. So she's got a lot of representing to do. I think a haircut's so great, I think she can do anything with it. Okay, that, that's, that's the kind of great hairstyling that can do 90% of the work for you. And if the costume looks good, I don't think she could mess it up. All right, then just a few months later in the same summer, DC hopes that James Gunn can throw them a successful curveball just like he did for Marvel. And to be fair, even though I think James Gunn has had not such great uh, situations with female characters everywhere else, Gamora, Nebula, and Mantis, I like Mantis, turned out pretty darn good. Nebula is actually my favorite, but that's thanks to other people's work in Avengers Endgame. But Gunn still put her on the board and did cast Karen Gillan. Uh, Margot Robbie will not only be back as Harley Quinn, what will she wear? Who will she be besties with? Those might seem like shallow questions, but they aren't with Margot, with, uh, you know, Harley Quinn. Uh, and I do like Margot, Ro I mean, I, I don't, it's not my favorite, but I do appreciate Margot Robbie's portrayal of the character. Uh, Viola Davis also returns as Amanda Waller, hopefully with more screen time and a plan that's not stupid. I love Davis as Waller. I think she's really well cast. So here's hoping that Gunn finally makes the role worthy of her. You have a freaking Oscar winner playing Amanda Waller. Use her. Then Daniela Melchior, a newcomer, uh, both uh, as an actress and as a character, because this is a character I guarantee you probably have not heard of, will gender bend Ratcatcher. And if anyone gets upset about that gender bending, they are ridiculous. Uh, Ratcatcher can control rats and has carried a cyanide gun, gas gun in the comics, which to be fair, Apparently that gas can be used to help Ratcatcher control other, like, people? It seems not to work, but they were, they were like, there's only so much we can do with rats. What can James Gunn do with rats? I mean, what's bigger? The group of people who like rats, I'm thinking it's not that big, or the group of people that have a hard time looking at rats for a long period of time in, say, a movie. Hopefully, moviegoers are somewhere in between. James Gunn has cast a few other women, including his girlfriend, but this is the Suicide Squad, so uh, don't get too attached. Finally, as for guaranteed upcoming, uh, we're going to talk about some that are that should be used, but as for guaranteed upcoming DC female characters uh, on the silver screen, uh, while they haven't been cast yet, we do know who's coming in 20, the end of 2021 for the Black Adam movie. A uh, hot girl will finally be hitting the silver screen, a fan favorite from the animated series, but she showed up in a couple of like, like on the CW, not so successfully. Uh, that's because everybody wants to see the animated version, damn it. Uh, but this reincarnated super, superhero has had many incarnations. So it'll be interesting to see which one Dwayne Johnson, who's also a producer, chooses. But Hawkgirl, it said, isn't a, isn't a lead character. She's a supporting role in the movie. Uh, the, the female lead will actually be Black Adam's love interest and fellow anti-hero uh, in the comics, Isis. But I think it's safe to say they'll be changing her name. Some of you might be purists, but there's just no getting around that. You can't have her be called Isis. Uh, she gets her powers from an ancient Egyptian goddess uh, and is not only super enhanced, so, you know, super stamina, flight, strength, I mean, strength, but she also has flight. Um, but then she can also control nature. Sometimes, unintentionally, you know, her emotions get the best of her. When she's angry, it rains. When she's in a good mood, the flowers bloom. It sounds pretty awesome. Uh, Stargirl is also supposed to show up as a member of the JSA. She was on the casting list, but uh, with the character already getting a show on the CW and Dwayne Johnson understandably not wanting that TV version in his movie, there have been recent rumors that she might be replaced with Cyclone, also created by Jeff Johns. His shadow still looms. Uh, but Cyclone controls the wind? I mean, come on. Unless they cast a really likable actress, I think DC can do better there. Just give her, her, her screen time to someone else. You know, we don't want two crowded casts, right? But in terms of doing better, there are actually some really great DC female characters still available. Ones that could be just as popular as Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, and Mira. And it's kind of weird that they're still available. So here's who's, 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 here's who's left. And we hope, who's here still in the DC grab bag that we hope that some Hollywood talent takes advantage of. 
So J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot, it said, is working to develop movies and TV shows based on Justice League Dark. And I think surely Zatanna has to be at the top of everyone's wish list, right? She is a very cool magician who casts her spells by speaking backwards. Sometimes she's like a classic old school magician, but sometimes she also goes a little goth. I think either way would be highly acceptable to fans. Uh, Ava DuVernay, along with Mr. Miracle writer Tom King, he wasn't so good on Batman, because if you're a DC fan, that's how you know him, and you're like, that guy? He was very good on uh, Vision and Mr. Miracle, so he can do a good job. Uh, so they're supposed to be bringing Big Barda to the big screen. But we'll see if Marvel's Eternals, which is extremely similar, getting to theaters first creates an issue there for Warner Brothers. Big Barda and Mr. Miracle are a fantastic couple. Um, but I do suspect they, I do suspect Ava DuVernay, who loves Big Barda, would race spend the character. But I would be okay with that. I think it always comes down to just getting the right actor. I think with the right actor, you can make those kinds of changes. I was very happy with Journey Smollett Bell as Black Canary. All right, then, of course, DC fans would love, so th those are at least maybe in the works. Now, DC fans would love to see Vixen in the movies, speaking of uh, DC female characters of color. Uh, no one's talking about this though, which is too bad. I mean, no one's like thinking of developing Vixen. Uh, she's gotten some attention in animation, of course, but the character who can summon, it's hard to describe her powers, which is maybe why she's still on the bench. But basically she has this totem that she can use, and it was so sad that she was just like the other girlfriend in the animated series. I mean, the character deserved better than that, but at least she was on the screen and she got to be part of some cool episodes. She was in the grudge match, but she can summon the strength and skills of any animal. And she still hasn't realized her full potential potential yet. They might feel there's a simila similarity there to Black Panther, but I mean, DC's just going to have to push back because Marvel's just taking everything at this point. Uh, many of us were also hoping to see Killer Frost as a member of uh, the Suicide Squad in some upcoming movie. Her powers are self-explanatory. She's basically evil Elsa. Uh, so both Supergirl and Batgirl have been uh, discussed by the studio suits over at Warner Brothers. Uh, interestingly, I, uh, Supergirl is an interesting character because sometimes she's made to be evil, which is kind of cool, but that's really actually the most her character's been developed as of late. But when it comes to Batgirl, of course, Jeffrey Wright is a new Commissioner Gordon, incredibly well cast. See, that's a great example of well done race bending. It's not, it's like you look at Jeffrey Wright and you go, but he is Commissioner Gordon. But of course, if he's, if he's uh, Commissioner Gordon, that means they would also have to race bend Barbara Gordon. So they would have to look for the right actress to pull that off because Barbara Gordon is beloved by, um, many fans, as she is. But I think it can be done. Then, of course, Wonder Woman can continue to do some heavy lifting in this department, as she should, with some of her other famous villains, right? Circe, the ancient uh, Greek sorceress, that's right, from the Odyssey. But also, uh, Greg Rucka did a great job reimagining her recently, and I think she'd be really cool. And then, of course, there's also Giganta, whose powers are also self-explanatory. Remember how cool Ginormica was in Monsters vs. Uh, Monsters and Aliens? Monsters vs. Aliens? It would be the same thing. I think it would be excellent. Finally, of course, the biggest, most obvious omission is where the heck is Poison Ivy? Don't worry, that Gotham City Sirens video is coming later this week. So, which are your favorite DC female characters in any medium? Uh, you know, comic books, animation, and the big screen. And who are, you the, who are you the most excited to see come to the movies next? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.